All right, so in this second video, I am going to go through the logic of how this node network is set up. I'm going to go over the code, first the basics, and then some specifics. Okay, so over here in this first tool, I'm um, going to edit an external editor. And the one I have set is VS Code. This gives us some nice coloring that we can more easily organize the color and uh, code and talk about it. All right, so first thing to notice is everything up here in the configure area. Um, these are things I set that you might want to change or add to. And I guess first of all, if you don't know any Python, uh, this should be easy enough. You do need to be exact with what you do. So, um, or else it'll, it'll throw an error. Um, but this is pretty simple. We're just putting strings inside of these lists and editing some values if need be. Um, and I'll walk you through this. Okay, so first of all, any files in the folder that you choose to import a texture uh, need to be JPEG or PNG. But if you have another file format that you want it to pick up, you can add that here. Um, I'm not sure what other file format you might want. Uh, we can test that out and you can message me if there's a standard use case that you have that we can add that we can add here for the uh, main tool and we can include that in an update. Okay, this texture dictionary, this is for each of the, the each of the conceptual uh, textures that you would include in your texture import and the variations of the what they might be named. So we know that base color is sometimes called diffuse, um, and then there's some, sometimes has an underscore, sometimes a space, sometimes no space. So we're gonna match against all of these when we're searching that folder for each of these texture types. Um, to note, diffuse sometimes is different than base color, subtly different. Um, if, if you would like that, implemented it better, let me know and we can figure something out. Um, one other thing to note is when one when one of the keys is a substring of another, if one of these values is a substring of another, that could cause an issue. Um, so if you are adding in values and it's not behaving correctly, it might be because of the logic below not prepared to handle it. I uh, So I have already handled this situation, which I'll show you below. It's a little, it's a little bit complex to look at, but um, that's what's going on. So just be mindful if you do add something in. It can't be the substring of another, one of the strings from another category, from another key up here, or you'll run into issues. Okay, um, base color preference list. So basically what this is saying is, if we find base color in the folder, then we're going to we're going to go ahead and use that even if there's also a diffuse. I know some uh, using Substance Designer, uh, sometimes the output will come with diffuse and base color. I just want to use the base color. So that is what we have in here. You can also, you can change this to say diffuse if that's the one you prefer and it'll ignore anything else. Um, <clears throat> this is where, so default matnet parent path, this is the Python, or sorry, the Houdini path to where we want to create our node networks, our material, uh, material networks that all the nodes will be imported into. Um, displacement scale, I set this a lot lower than it is because uh, you'll get just ex a very large amount of displacement that uh, that you probably don't want. Uh, but you can set this to whatever you'd like. And like I showed you before, you can also save this as a preset within the material so that when, every time you load it, it's it's whatever value that makes sense for that texture. Um, here, if, we're, if there's gloss, that's defined, but no roughness, we'll go ahead and import the gloss, uh, but we'll invert it by default. That's set here. Just make sure that 
it's either true or false and that it's capitalized with the first letter. Um, load user presets. This is, I set this to true by default. Um, go ahead and yeah, see the first video for an explanation on what that does. If this is false, then it won't even attempt to load any user presets whatsoever. Uh, logging level, this is mostly for um, debugging purposes. Though for this release, <laughs> this needs to be info, so we're not bugging it with too much information. Um, okay, so yeah, just make sure the texture, the textures are named, you know, name with just underscores and letters. Uh, numbers are probably okay. And then dot, only one dot, and then the extension, the file format extension. Okay, then I have some logger stuff set up and loading up a session variable. All right, and so most of this, you don't need to know too much about it. But basically, in this for loop here, we're going in and uh, for each of the files and we're asking it if it is going to match against one of the keys in this dictionary. And once it matches, then we have determined that it's, a, it's this type of texture. So the, um, so our first one here is base color. And this uh, has some logic to check if it's in the preferences or not. Oh yeah, and this also will go ahead and set the color into the emission color if no emission color was found, but emission was found. So if an em emission value is set and loaded in, but there was no emission color, then yeah, go ahead and use the base color for that. Um, then then we, some of them are really straightforward. There's just like ambient occlusion. That's just uh, some black and white data. So we need that uh, the signature changes to a float instead of color for that node, and then just connects it up to that uh, standard surface node. Metalness, same thing. Specular. Uh, yeah, specular, same thing. Specular roughness. Invert the gloss, if it's, you're gonna use gloss. Okay. Um, Normal is pretty straightforward, but it also has a normal map mode, or sorry, normal map node. Displacement. Um, has that default scale. So that default scale will be overridden if you have a user preset because this code comes after. Uh, mission. Mission color and see this is the handling of the substring substring I was telling you about. So if you have uh, an issue with substrings and your values up there, let me know. We can sort it out. Uh, we have opacity, transparency, and I uh, index of refraction that as well. Opacity, transparency. All right, so that uh, that's an overview of this code and how that logically works. Uh, now we'll sh let's go back to the back into Houdini, and this is the result of that. Um, let's go into another material. Let's see, I have some lava. All right, so. This one has the base color, like I mentioned before, being used for emission color, since there was not there was no emission color included with the output in the folder that uh, I imported. The emission was, okay, we have metallic, specular, I, 
I'm not quite sure if this is correct, but this is how I have it set up here. You might need to connect, um, connect or disconnect some of the nodes depending on what kind of workflow you're doing. Some of the sets of textures that are output from, uh, for example, Substance Designer are going to have multiple texture outputs for different workflows that aren't really needed together. So that's that's up to that's up to you to go in and um, make adjustments as needed. Uh, anything that does work for a standard workflow for either of them should be fine and should be in the the tool uh, in this tool that I've made. But you should make sure that you don't have any more textures than you need um, for any given workflow that you have. So we have the normal map that came in, the height displacement, and that's that's pretty much how it works. So let me know if you have any default parameters for any of these nodes, any workflows that uh, you think would be more optimized, uh, better, or especially if you have um, ref uh, material references to back up the workflow and, and what you need. And uh, I can help update this tool so that it works, works better for you.